Hi guys, it's Carolyn with Dream Baby Sleep. I am excited to be talking to you tonight about the secret sauce on sleep. We have been getting a lot, a lot, a lot of questions about toddlers. So uh, for all of the folks watching us on replay, I want to thank you. Go ahead and comment down below with what city you're joining us from because we would love to shout out for you. For those of you, I have a challenge. For those of you watching this live, go ahead and comment with an emoji thumbs up. Okay, in the comments. For those of you who are watching us on replay, go ahead and comment with a heart, okay? We're running a little science experiment. So um, with that said, I wanna jump right in. I wanted to talk to you guys quickly about some secret sauce. What is most important to you? Oh, and also we're gonna be having a contest, so stay tuned to the end and I'll share with you what the very exciting contest is, okay? So with that said, some secret sauce. Number one, number one, number one. You guys have heard me say this so many times. If you have have a toddler or an infant who is not sleeping well, waking up multiple times a night and you're just like, oh God, what am I doing wrong, Carolyn? Help me. What time is your bedtime? What time is your bedtime? If your bedtime is too late, it's the number one trigger for multiple night wakings. I have several cases right now that we have brought bedtime way down, way down. And the first thing everybody says is, if I bring bedtime down um, and make it earlier, then the baby is gonna be up at the crack of dawn when that is not the case. I know it feels counterintuitive, but sleep does beget sleep sleep. Anybody, regardless of what time you're putting your infant or toddler to sleep tonight, um, I want you to make it 15 to 30 minutes earlier if you're experiencing multiple night wakings, regardless of what time it is, okay? Bedtime in a perfect world for a infant over the age of four months old, up until a toddler, including my daughter, who's five and a half years old, bedtime should be no later than, wait for it, no later than, if you follow me a lot, go ahead and throw it into the comments, you know bedtime should be no later than 7.30 p.m., you guys, okay? So, first tip that is the secret sauce. If you're experiencing multiple night waking, bring that bedtime down and make it 15 to 30 minutes earlier, okay? If you're just joining me now, my name is Carolyn Harvey. I'm the founder of Dream Baby Sleep. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find us on our website at www.dreambabysleep.com. Stay tuned till the end because we're having a contest and it's a really fun one that I'm super excited about and it's a surprise, not only to you guys, but to my team. If you can help us, go ahead and share this video. If you enjoy following me, if you think I'm as quirky and funny and smart as I feel like I am, go ahead and share it with your friends because we really appreciate that. Tag a sleep deprived parent because we all know one. Okay, so we already talked about earlier bedtime. I don't mean you have to jump to the 5.30 p.m. bedtime. Don't panic everybody, okay? If that's not for you and it doesn't work for your family dynamic, I get it. Just make bedtime 15 to 30 minutes earlier, hold steady there for seven to 10 days, and then message me if you saw an improvement with your multiple night waking. I wanna hear from you, okay? So my second tip is, I am hearing so much right now, and Jen, who's on the Dream Team, and I were talking about this today, so many clients, folks that we hear on Facebook, and they are um, having toddlers who are even 20 months old, 20 five months old, um, not even quite two yet, they're like, ah, I think I'm going to move them to a, a, a big kid bed or a big boy or big girl bed because um, I, I think that they're ready. Do you see this face? No, 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 they are not ready, you guys. Please do not move your toddlers to a big kid bed. Now, danger is a different story. We've got jumpers amongst us. 
all of my jumpers, raise your hand, go ahead and like um, this post. When you see it on replay, we appreciate our replay audience. We have jumpers. They jump out of the crib. It's dangerous, okay? We teach the no, a firm but loving no, just like we would teach the no for touching a hot stove. Just because they're jumpers does not mean it's time to transition them to a toddler bed when they're under age three. I prefer you keep them in a crib as long as humanly possible, but never move them before age three. Children at that age do not have the ability to display self-control. It may go well the first two to three weeks, and then they'll realize, oh, gee, I can get out of here. And you think you had a problem with early rising before, and you think you had a problem with naps before, hold on to your hats, my friends. Do yourself a favor um, and do not transition them. Now, if you have a jumper, safety first, obviously. I want you to build a landing pad, okay? Pillows, blankets, use a um, blow-up mattress that's not um, firmly inflated, whatever. Create a landing pad um, and also firmly but lovingly teach the no when they jump out, okay? Just like you would teach the no of touching an outlet or a hot stove. Drop the mattress to the floor if you can. Be very, very cautious that there is no gap between the, the mattress being on the floor and the bottom of your crib. No gap. Otherwise, that does not work, okay? If one side of your crib is higher than the other, flip that bad boy around so that the low side of the crib is up against the wall and the high side is facing out, okay? Do not panic if they start climbing out. Please, do n I shouldn't actually be recommending this, but I love you guys, so I'm going to. We get so many clients because they transfer them to a big boy or a big girl bed too soon. Even the mattress on the floor, okay? It's too soon. Um, I'm not following the comments, but I just saw my beautiful friend, um, Kirsten, pop on. So, hey, Kirsten. I don't even have my glasses on. I just saw your striking photo there. So, um, I am going to address the comments later, but I'm trying to whistle through this. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. So, thank you for all your support. Um, so, we're not transferring prior to age three, okay? Um, what was the third thing I wanted to talk to you guys about? Jen and I were on the phone. Zan and I were, oh, Zan and I were on the phone and we were talking about um, early rising for our little peanuts, okay? Early rising is the hardest um, skill to overcome, the hardest skill to teach, the biggest challenge to overcome. The lightest stage of REM sleep is between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m., okay? So when they naturally wake up during that time frame, it's very challenging for them to return to sleep. You guys, sleep is a learned behavior. It is not an innate skill. We sleep train awake for the day just like we do the bedtime. Okay, so whatever sleep training method, and Jennifer and Zan from the Dream Team will go ahead and comment um, the um, top sleep training method blog. They'll put that in the comments so you guys can see it. Whatever sleep training method you choose for bedtime, you apply to night waking, you apply to naps, and everybody skips early rising. You apply the same sleep training method to early rising, okay? Um, all right, so a couple quick tips that we wanted to share. Thank you again to our replay audience. If you're watching us on replay, I want you to go ahead and comment with a heart. If you're watching us live, go ahead and comment with a thumbs up. Um, I want everybody to comment with what city and state they're tuning in from because we love to see. We get Chicago, California internationally it's super fun so we appreciate that you can check us out on www.dreambabysleep.com and we are having a contest and the contest goes a little something like this our one and only Jennifer Mandillo is about to have a baby any second baby number three and the contest is in honor of my beautiful friend my partner in crime Jennifer Mandillo and we want you to um, enjoy a complimentary 45-minute sleep consultation with me, with yours truly, 45 minutes free on the phone with me. And the way that you enter this contest is number one, by liking this post. Number two, by sharing 
this post. And number three, by commenting in this post, Snapchat, Carolyn Harvey. That's my name. We're going to include my Snapchat because we're on Snapchat and it's so fun. We are having so much fun, okay? Um, we want you to follow us on Snapchat. So it's three steps. It's actually four, but this is a great prize, you guys, okay? So I want you to comment in honor of Jennifer who is having her baby. Go ahead and like the post, share the post, comment below, Snapchat, Carolyn Harvey. The fourth step is... You come over to Snapchat and you follow me on Snapchat, Carolyn Harvey. So we are talking about really cool stuff on Snapchat. We are giving away a lot of secret sauce on Snapchat. Um, you get behind the scenes a lot. So follow us on Snapchat. And for everybody that is tuning in, everybody that is watching this on replay, go ahead and guess for me when you think Jen is going to have her beautiful baby girl. Um, I'm so honored and privileged to have her as a part of the dream team. I'm not a crier, but I get a little choked up right now. I'm getting a little choked up. I am so excited for her and her two beautiful boys, Anthony and Luca, her amazing husband, Anthony. I cannot wait to meet that beautiful baby girl. She's going to come any day now. I know it. We've already got contractions 12 minutes apart. It could be tonight. I am super, super excited. So most importantly, Importantly, whether you enter the contest or not, go ahead and give a lot of love to Jennifer Mandelo. Um, we can't wait to meet your baby girl. I love you very much. You guys have a great night, and thanks so much for all your support and for following us. Good night, guys.